With the selection list action, you can easily trigger selection lists like this. Users can make multiple selections using checkboxes, radio buttons, even drop down menus, and auto complete search boxes. Need to include prices for each selection? No problem. Bot sheets will total up the costs of individual items in a list and present the cost on a button, then save the total cost for you to a user field. Each selection list is a Google Sheet column. Here's a list of real estate preferences. Because I have multiple columns, the bot can display multiple selection lists, either one list at a time or up to five lists in a single view. So you just add data to your Google Sheet columns that you want to appear in your lists and then use the selection list action to read from the sheet and present the data. If you want just one list of data, choose one selection list. Let's say I'm running a chatbot that is going to drive e-commerce transactions. At some point in the order funnel, I'm going to need to collect some shipping information. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is collect the country information, and I can present that in a selection list here. So I'm going to give a reference name to a web view, which is going to load up a list of countries that the user can select. Then I'm going to refer to the Google Worksheet where I'm going to store my list of countries. And so if we jump over to the Google Sheet, you can see here that I have a list of all of the countries that I'm going to ship to. I have the shipping method associated with each country, and I have a shipping price associated with each country as well. So I'm going to read all of this data from the Google Sheet and I can change the data, add new countries, change the rates and change the shipping methods and it will be dynamically generated inside of the conversational experience. Now I can choose the style. So maybe I'm going to use Messenger Blue or I could just use Bot Sheets Green or any one of these predefined color schemes uh, that will match the look and feel of my brand. Now I'm going to want a main header, so we're just going to call this shipping and I'm going to have a subheader. So the subheader, I'm going to make it a call to action for the user to select the destination country for their order. Next, I'm going to want to select the Google Sheet column with the country. So I can see here uh, that I have shipping country and that refers to shipping country, which is in the top row of the Google Worksheet. Now I'm going to want to include prices and this is optional, but in the case of shipping, I have different prices associated with different countries. So I'm going to read from that column as well. And I'm going to just give the name of the column, which is the shipping price. I'm going to pick the type of selection list. In this case, I want to use a drop down because maybe I'll have, you know, 30 or 40 countries and it's just really easy for the user to pick that from a drop down menu. I have other options here as well, but the one that's required as indicated by this blue asterisk is I'm going to want to save the country to a user field. So I'm just going to save whatever country the user picks to this user field that I've created called shipping selection. I have additional options as well, but none of those are relevant for this use case. All I need is a submit button and I can add the label for the button. In this case, it's going to be save the country. And when they click that button, I'm going to want to send the user to a flow so I can pick from my list of flows. And that is where the user will continue the order process. So all of this data that we've put into this form is app data, and it's going to be used to generate a custom URL that is going to be triggered when the user clicks a button. So we're using response mapping here and we're going to get a URL from Botsheets and it's going to get saved to this custom user field that we call web view URL. And you can see here it says, OK, where are we shipping your order? And when they click that button, it's going to trigger that URL with everything we set up in the action. Let me show you how a selection list action works for a restaurant. Let's say you have a bunch of items on a restaurant menu and each item can be customized. 
you can trigger a list when a user clicks a button in a dynamic gallery with your restaurant menu. You can see here that I'm using a web view button type. And I'll give the web view a name. That way, when I use a selection list action, I just need to add the name here. So when users click a button, the web view with the selection list is triggered. You just need one flow and you put all of your selection list actions in that one flow. Maybe the restaurant has pizza on the menu and a user needs to select the pizza size and the toppings they want. For that, I'd use a selection list action with two lists. Maybe the restaurant offers sandwiches too and that item requires customization. I can just add another selection list action for that item. Then I'll just connect all the actions together and both the pizza and sandwich selection lists are all managed in one flow. I can keep going and I can keep adding more selection lists for every item on the restaurant menu. And you just need to remember to link all of your selection lists together. And every time you make changes to a selection list action or you add a new one, you just need to preview this one flow to update thought sheets. It's pretty simple to manage all of your selection lists in one flow like this. I'm going to need two lists, one to capture a pizza size, and so I'm going to use radio buttons for that. And the other list will include checkboxes, so users can select multiple toppings for a pizza. I can set the whole thing up directly in one action. I'll need to pick the worksheet I'm reading data from, and I have an options worksheet where I have all of my columns of data, with each column being a list. For each list, I'll add a subheader. For the first list, I'll want them to pick the size of the pizza. I then add the column name with my pizza sizes so those get displayed. Since my pizza sizes all have different prices, I'll refer to a column so that a price will be displayed with each size selection. If your selection list doesn't need prices, you can just skip this. I just need to store all of their selections. The size, and the toppings, they're all gonna get saved to one field. So if we scroll down in the action, you can see that I can have everything the user picks saved to one user field. If there's a price for items in the list, then you can save a sum total of all items in the list to one field. I'm also going to be able to enable the user to select a quantity. So if, for example, the user wants to order pizza, they can make all of their selections, and then select the quantity of pizzas, and I'll save that number to a user field as well. It saves the extra step of then having to ask the user after they make their selections to pick a quantity of the item using quick replies. It's all done in one view. I can customize the label of the submit button for the list, and I can determine what flow is triggered when the user clicks the submit button. All of this is done in a bot sheets many chat action. So I'll put all of my selection list data in the Google Sheet and I'll generate the list natively inside of a many chat flow. It's pretty easy. So let's see what my pizza selection list looks like. Okay, great. 